All right, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the end of the game. So I won on turn 40 here in my Draconian Necromancer versus Phi Allied Emperor level AI opponents. Um, it was a pretty quick game, pretty dominant. Uh, so I'm going to review what I did for the last few turns since my last overview. So where to begin? Um, first of all, we'll take a look at where I was at. You can see that I completed most of the Empire quests. Um, and in terms of governance, I only ever got uh, here. This is kind of the last valuable one before you get to here. Didn't even get to there in this game. Uh, in terms of what was being built, you can see a lot of uh, just producing merchandise, but was for the long term was planning to make some draconian flyers if need be. Was forging some stuff. I'll go over some of the items that I forged in a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, most of my good cities were captured cities. You can see uh, my leader here, two obsidians, Lord of the Deep, King Shack, uh, my second uh, necromancer with a glutton mana core and shock serpent, which I was seeking to level up. Uh, this I, from Surrender, picked up this uh, hero in these units, also from an earlier Surrender, a few flyers from doing Heptatopia, uh, surrender leader, surrender leader. I think I pulled somebody in here, but the rest were surrenders. Independent army with shock serpents. And you notice I usually have at least one reanimator in the stack, just like uh, my Steam guide talks about the importance of having at least one reanimator um, to keep the machine going. A few other pretty powerful stacks of units. This is a, an example of a mobile flying unit. These folks cleared out um, lower to mid tier sites, uh, and then the rest were just uh, shuffling bound. Some were guarding cities or being available in the city so they could ship an artifact just built. Uh, poor Banshees, three obsidians, some at the time. You see, I won the game even before I had some of my first Dread Reaper. Um, I was really hoping to get to use them, but uh, of course we'll take the victory. In terms of what I had, uh, you can see the stuff I had available to me. These were used a lot. I was hoping to do this. This was cooking until it got uh, disjointed. Um, stiffened limbs used so that you can cool stuff. Um, and yeah, some of this stuff. So that's it with that. Um, so again, I started here and I moved mostly east and then up and then left with uh, so one army kind of going this way, another army doubled back and came this way and then up. Uh, similar pattern underground where it came here and then went up and was ready to go right. Most of the opponents were clustered in this upper right-hand corner here. Um, so what else do I need to show you? What else? Um, let's look at what items I ended with. Let's look at our main heroes. The only two interesting ones were my leader and my other necromancer. So let's see what we have. We have this wyvern mount, which is great for the fire protection and the flying. Tireless boots and defense is great. I had massive defense in this guy. I was really lucky. Um, more defense, uh, Inflict Despair meant that I didn't have to spend a point on Inflict Despair, some good defense and hit points, fire protection, and then phase, which saved me from having to spend points on uh, Shadow Step, and then of course a life drain, which gets boosted to a greater life drain uh, because of the, um, because of the, um, lifesteal ability that I took early in the game. I had this on backup when I needed to get up to 100% spirit, otherwise I took, kept it off, but blight and fire I was immune to. This was, I was about to pop in here to keep things cheap. Uh, yeah, that's interesting with him. Nothing terribly interesting here. Um, uh, the Dreadnought gave him some decent stuff. 
I like that robe. Uh, the defender is really nice. Shadow step, good mount. Um, so this is the other interesting guy. So this is I like this mythical weapon because it comes with the first strike and the pull arm and a life steal and a little bit of damage. Uh, this with the fearsome is a nice ability to tank a bunch of stuff, some resistance, and then uh, enfeebling fever and exhausting fatigue. Uh, when it came to doing the black bolts, it's just a lot of debuffs I'm putting out. Plus four, save mount. Got a lot of these mounts. Um, defender on this. Is that a double defender? Or is that the other hero? I think that was the other hero. Yeah. Uh, keeping it cheap there. Had this back up. Fire breath was real nice. Control one dead, so I didn't have to spend money on that. And then I could have done this uh, tireless shield instead, since I didn't have tireless boots on this guy. So I think that was it for interesting swag. Yeah, the rest of them, got, the rest of the heroes got my crappy artifacts. So, uh, what else? It was just starting to make static shields, uh, which are uh, a lot of fun uh, to put on heroes. So I think that's it. So let's go ahead and accept the surrender and win the game so that we can view statistics. So you can see um, that as I start to kill my first opponent here, uh, I start to really skyrocket in terms of taking over towns. Um, you know, my knowledge was kind of in the middle of the pack until it finally started eclipsing around turn 35. Happiness does not matter. Um, military, uh, you know, I, I came out ahead of the pack quite early, and that's because I started probably Googling around this turn. Um, domain, again, other people had bigger domains, but I just started to really uh, skyrocket here. And, yep, that's it. So, um, Hope you enjoyed that walkthrough, and uh, I will see you in the next walkthrough series again. The formula I followed to beat these five AI opponents in 50 turns was laid out in my Steam guide uh, for the using the Draconian Necromancer, um, and that I will link to in the description below. So yeah, do uh, check out my other videos where I show how to use the Draconian Necromancer to beat tons of AI opponents with various handicaps in pretty tidy fashion. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.